the basic idea that he's kind of introducing here is that language and hu that language itself is a kind of parasite. He calls it a parasite on the human organism and that language and humans exist in this kind of symbiotic relationship. So if you think of language as a, an organism, you can kind of imagine that if it's an organism, it's got its own kind of um, needs in terms of wanting to reproduce itself. And what he's saying that it's, it's an organism that is, um, that needs humans, obviously, in order to re reproduce itself. And it wants to do things, language will want to and it's sort of, quote, do things in order to insinuate itself as much as it can into the human organism, to make itself indispensable to the human organism. And so we have to then understand um, the evolution of the brain as something that's reacting to kind of pressure from language to um, you know, to, to, to make the brain more conducive to language, right? So that's kind of how he's seeing it. So as I said, he's, he's seeing this co-evolution in which um, human, the, the human brain has to adapt to language in order to make language as, quote, infective as possible, as something that, that will be as, as, as essential as possible to, uh, to the human organism and would encourage the spread and development of language. I, I mean, obviously, we're at the point where obviously every human is going to speak and is going to have a human language. But there was, I mean, what he's imagining is this early time in which this evolutionary process had not yet developed so much. But there might have been a beginning of a kind of symbolic reference system that then became kind, kind of infective, that, that sort of infected human brains and then sort of exerted this pressure on human brains to develop in a certain way. Right, um, and so so he's he's trying to link up, as I said, language change and brain evolution. Right, um, and what he's also indicating is that language change will happen much more quickly than brain evolution. Right, because obviously you know from one generation to the next, you know language can change very much. Right, because there's not you don't need to do that much in order to change language. Right? It's, it's going to be, it'll, it'll change at a rate that's, you know, thousands of times faster than, 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 uh, than genetic change in, 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 in a biological organism. And so for this reason, he's seeing that, that the pressure of language change is going to be much more important in this process of coevolution than, um, than the transformation of the brain. Right? Um, we're out of time. So um, we'll start, I mean, we're, we're at the end of chapter four. We're going to, uh, just a, a little bit on chapter f uh, five and six about brain size next time, uh, but go through especially, I guess, uh, you know, don't worry so much about the chapter on, um, uh, on, 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 the, on vocalization so much. I think that's chapter eight, but uh, focus on, on chapters nine and ten that talk about kind of brain development. They're kind of, you know, don't, don't get stuck with the details. A lot of time technical stuff about brain development and brain structure. Um, but just kind of, you know, do like the young children and just kind of gloss over the details. Get the, get the big picture, right? Okay. Thank you.